I think reading is so important and that's why I'm making today's video to tell you why I think it's very, it's vital in fact to get yourself in front of a book and as many books as you can. As you can see, I've got a, a growing library of books that I've collected over the years. I've just been fascinated by books. To me, a book, no matter what it is, whether it's a, a companion, a, an encyclopedia, a novel, a non-fiction, um, whatever it might be, it's an encapsulation of somebody else's ideas, crystallised into something that you can read and digest and think about. I know a bloke, a friend of mine um, from some time ago now, who said to me quite unbelievably that he never read books, that he, he, didn't, he didn't have any, I think he had about three books in his house. He didn't read them. He read at school, and thereafter his interests had waned. And I just thought that was so incredible that one could go through life without reading, without experiencing other people's thoughts in such a wonderful way that I thought he was missing out so much because where could he get his ideas and his inspiration from other than the media, the television media, perhaps newspapers, and these days, of course, social media and YouTube. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with exclusively getting your um, ideas and your horizons broadened by those things. Watching documentaries and listening to debates, of course, is absolutely um, br brilliant. It's, it's just that you you know, it's, there's nothing better in some ways of listening to two people talking about a subject and thrashing it out and, and finding all the nuances. But there is a, a whole world, historically, going back to, the, to the, the early books as well as more recent books, in which people at any one time, in any one place in the world, have encapsulated their thoughts and put them into a text that you can digest at your own time, in your own space. Uh, and that's what a book does for me. And sometimes I'll buy a book on a whim, on the, on the cover. The cover itself may have something about it that I think, oh, that looks interesting. And I may get the book home, I may start to read it, and I, and I think to myself, blimey, I don't know who this author is trying to impress, but I can't conceive what he's getting at. It may be that the words are too long. It may be that he's taking too long to get to his point or her point. Um, it may be that it's too simplistic, that I already know a lot of the stuff, or it's so beyond me that I realise that actually I need to read three or four books before I could approach the text of another book. But that doesn't matter because it can sit on my shelf and as I, and I've done that with many history books, I have bought them and thought, oh, I don't really understand what you're talking about. You keep referring to things that I'm not familiar with. And so you read around the subject and then you return to the book and suddenly it all makes sense. But how can you have a broad mind if you're not reading? That's what I don't understand and I, I found that very difficult. People are very much being impressed, I think, with what's here and now, what is the zeitgeist, what is prevalent at the moment on the news and forming their opinions and not necessarily forming them from um, a much deeper wealth. I suppose it's that thing, uh, uh, the difference between perhaps somebody sketching something very quickly on a piece of paper with a pencil, an artist for example, down in the town perhaps drawing some people um, or an event and then coming back and sitting there and thinking about using the sketch as a reference but adding, well I saw these colours and these colours but perhaps that's not quite how I want to reflect the scene. My emotional response to the scene uh, was more in this way and I'm going to reflect it by putting more emphasis on this framing rather than what I was quickly doing. 
And in a way, I would see that, that the quick sketches, uh, the quick bits is what we get in the newspapers, the social media and potentially radio. But those deeper thoughts, those more um, baked in ideas that we might have uh, formulated in the writing process. It, it, I've, I've tried writing books. I've written some children's books that, which just were not um, up to speed for the commercial world. They were um, not dumbed down enough. They were too wordy, too involved. The plots were too deep, I think, having then compared my books to other books that are commercially available for today's audience. I very much pitched myself, I think, for an audience that I was when I was a kid uh, back in the 70s. And I realised that really the style of writing that I do, I want to say too much and put too much colour in and, and it's not right for, I think, uh, today's children, which is a shame because they were full of adventure and full of fun. Um, and I hadn't addressed myself very well. And so I know it's a hard process, but it is a thoughtful process and that the words don't just come out willy-nilly. You, you've got to think about it so that when you read, of course, you're doing that process in reverse. You're absorbing the knowledge of one person. You may not, you may not agree with them or you may find that there are many aspects of what they say you agree with and many aspects that you disagree with. Because most people are complex, their opinions, their thoughts, their philosophy is not all in one camp. They're not all, let's say, politically over to the right with nothing to the left or vice versa. That people tend to have some things that you would agree with and some things that we disagree with. And we're in a world in which we've we polarised people that if they they think one way about one subject, we've dismissed them completely, assuming that they have nothing good in them about any other subject, which is mighty strange. Um, and that seems to happen more and more in this day and age. If they've got one particular bee in their bonnet, everything about them is rubbish. Um, and sometimes there is, and I've had that with viewers who have liked things that I've done when I've made my walking videos and they said Richard really like this and we really like that and we love your philosophy on this that and the other and then I'll mention one thing one thing I'll say do you know what I don't really think that the climate crisis is as bad as everybody makes out I don't think that it is I have my reasons for thinking that but I just don't think that and suddenly because I suddenly don't go along with what the mainstream media and the the political will of the country is all about. I am now, everything that I've done is all bad and rotten. And, and this is ridiculous really, because everybody has something that they disagree with. Uh, so books contain that one person. So, you, you know, you'll read a book and you'll say, well, I disagree with that and I disagree with that, but actually, no, that's very interesting. Books are amazing ways. Another thing about books that I really love is the fact that, uh, and real books, I'm talking about books that you can pick up, uh, not digital books that seem to, I don't know, whilst the information might be there, but it's, it's, it's in a way, it's like reading on a web page. You read it, you're getting instant satisfaction. It's like eating a cake, um, instant satisfaction in the mouth, but really wholesomely, is it, is it going in? I don't, I don't know. There's something, I, a, a, there's something, what is it, I can't put it into words, visceral, primitive, about the, the, the printing on paper, the permanency, I suppose, is part of it. Um, and of course, that, that analogue feeling of starting at the beginning and working your way through. And of course, I do pick up books and I will pick up a book and just read perhaps a chapter or even a paragraph, especially if I'm waiting for somebody to come or I'm waiting to do something or I'm just idling. I'll, my eye will cast along the spine of a book and go, oh, I remember that or I haven't read that yet and I'll pick it up and maybe read a little bit and go, oh, that's interesting and it, enough to just pique my interest. And of course, but that working your way through, that methodical working through a book and 
having the author unfold his, his or her ideas to you is very passive in a way. It's very relaxing, it's very methodical and it's very logical if the author has done their job well. And I think there is that sense that with a book like this you're not getting flashy adverts coming up in front of you. You're not getting those um, distractions that you often get when reading on a web page with adverts around the side um, and the, the, the light, if you like, from a computer screen. I like nothing better and I think it's so much more wholesome to take myself off into my own little room. Um, I mean, I live mostly alone, although I have the lovely Julia who comes around very regularly. Um, and, and we will sit and read together. There's a light up here, I don't know if you can see, it's just out of frame. She bought this light or brought this light round. Um, somebody was giving it away. And it's, it illuminates the sofa so that we can sit now on the sofa and we read to one another out loud. Reading out loud, even on your own, is a brilliant way of understanding and digesting very difficult material. I find that with history books very often. I'll read it and I think, I don't really understand it, it doesn't make much sense. But if I read it out loud, it forces me to look at the words, it forces me to construct, reconstruct the sentence aloud. I'm using the brain in a way that when you're passively reading, perhaps you're, you're absorbing in a slightly different way. I'm having to be more creative with the brain and read it out loud. And I can read it at my own pace. I have a, a sort of quiet internal reading pace when, when reading silently to myself. And sometimes I've realised, oh, I haven't really understood what I've read, but I'll carry on. But reading out loud, if I haven't understood, I go, wait, hang on, what did I just say? And I will slow right down and read every individual word. Another thing about reading that you, you can't do if you're watching videos and listening to the radio or just having a chat to somebody else is to, is to pause for a moment. You read something and you think, oh, that's interesting. I, I hadn't thought of it like that. And, and I will mull on a point. I'll read something and go, oh, I wonder if that's because, I wonder if he means this. I wonder if that, and it's a great excuse to think over what you've just read rather than simply read, yeah, okay, great, I've done that, throw that one away, get on to the next. Reading isn't, uh, for me, it isn't about the numbers. It isn't about trying to, you know, rapidly get through loads and loads of books. It's about absorbing, being interesting, being in the moment and thinking. More than anything else, it's about thinking. And I find that even, you know, you might think, well, reading, there's, there's novels, which is just entertainment, isn't it? It's just entertainment. It's like watching a drama on the television. And then there's history books, which is all about learning. And I think that's a, a, not the right way to think about it. You're learning from everything, all the time. We learn from everything, from every experience, from every encounter with somebody we see down the road. We learn uh, things. We may not always understand or know what we're learning. The subconscious is picking things up all the time, of course. But even in a novel, I mean, the great thing about novels is it takes you out of the, your own lived experience and places you into the experience of somebody else. Now it may be fictional, it may be that it isn't uh, real, but the experience generally, unless it's say science fiction or something, but even then the emotions of a character and the protagonists and the other characters that go in um, into making up the novel, you experience what they're thinking, they're seeing, they're sharing. It's taking you into a different world that you would ordinarily not have that opportunity to do. More so than watching a film, which has a very limited time, say an hour and a half, for example, with a much more generally cliched sort of outcome, uh, because it's, uh, films tend to be more commercially driven Whereas a novel, yes, they want to sell the novel, but the, but the novel is, is going on this amazing, I hate the word journey uh, as such, but it is taking you through a number of different situations and making you think. So I perhaps have never been in a, a gangland London situation where people have been beaten up and, and um, 
bullied or I've never been in a situation where certain uh, people are put upon, shall we say, and I would not have those experiences. But you can read a novel about that and and you can understand why people do things or why the main characters. It, it takes you into a, a, into trying to fathom out why somebody would do something which in your world would never happen. And uh, there are so many, so many, uh, and, and also, of course, at different time periods. For example, there's a terrific book, I f forget who the author was, who wrote The L-Shaped Room. It became a film in the 60s, as I remember it. And it was about a woman who was not married and pregnant. And she takes, because of the shame at that time of being pregnant, um, and worried and on her own basically in a pretty crappy job and living in a pretty crappy apartment that had an L-shaped room with um, a gentleman from a different country, I'm going to put that delicately, um, who would peer at her um, through a, a slot in the wall as I remember it and was quite frightening but she actually became friendly with him and that he wasn't the, um, uh, the antagonist in the, in the story in the end. But there were various other things. But through her experience, you suddenly get an insight what it must have been like to be a young lady who was pregnant and living in quite uh, poor conditions. And books do that. They take you into somebody else's world. As I say, it may be imagined, but it's, it's fantastic. Now, the chances are everybody who's watching this video is a reader, is somebody who reads. So I'm talking to the converted because those people who who don't read, who don't enjoy books, who don't understand books, who are not really into them, they see them perhaps as old-fashioned or fuddy-duddy or something like that, um, are probably not even, uh, have not been appealed by why it's important to read the thumbnail of this video or, or the title of this video, however I end up putting it. And that is a shame because I think in this day and age where we are thrust into ever more stress, ever more different predicaments that and and ever more social media quick fire this quick remedies likes and it, dopamine hits and things like this and um, all we're all seeming to be looking for um, these things that make us happy there is nothing happier than absorbing yourself slowing down taking yourself away from people and just throwing yourself into somebody else's life and getting another experience. Um, it, is, it is amazing and I, I, I just can't uh, recommend it enough. I'm sure you have your experiences and you have your favourite books and, and you will hear that there are books that are life changing. I read such and such and I thought differently. And that is so true. And, and, and in a way, in its smaller, incremental way, that happens with every book. You, you're changed a little bit. You're, you're the muesli of life, shall we say. You start off with perhaps just a, a raw bowl of oats or something, and then every book is adding something else until you have this amazing cacophony of experiences which you can relate to other people. It, it's wonderful. Um, that's why I think it's important to read. It's also very relaxing. And, um, and in this world, I think with the stresses, we, we need to relax. There's a hundred million other reasons why you should read, and I'm sure you can list them in the comments below. And please do tell me your favorite books, books that you recommend to other people. Uh, it'd be fascinating to see. Thank you for watching and have a good uh, rest of the, well, the rest of your life and have a good read. Bye-bye.